I remember a gaming forum, NeoGAF, and there was this guy there who said that it's like a hive mind, no dissenting opinions are allowed, and the guy gets banned for lying about the forum. Like, what do you mean we allow opposite opinions? You're a liar, banned. And we're seeing this at a macro scale now with cancel cultures. There's a lot of far left leading people that are saying cancel culture is bad and they're getting canceled for lying about it. It's like, no, that's a far right conspiracy theory. You're going to get canceled for promoting it. This is where we're at right now. Do you understand me? Like this is where we're at. So let's talk a bit about what is cancel culture. Let's try to define it because it's an ambiguous term really. And the best definition that I can come up with is when a corporation decides to sever ties with an individual because of outside pressure. And this can be a corporation firing someone or it can be a venue uh, deciding not to allow a person to host an event there. So it is a legal thing that is happening. No one is claiming that it is a criminal activity. But what people are saying is that it is immoral. The reason that it is immoral is because it's not grassroots. What I am trying to say is that it's not that the person is suddenly unpopular and no one wants to go see that event. So the company goes like, well, I don't see the point in allowing you to have this venue considering that you're not going to sell any tickets. Or it's not that the person is incapable of performing their job. Like, we just don't think that you cut it out to be a scientist. You're not delivering results. You're underperforming. So we decide to cut ties with you. No, no, no. What is happening here is that a couple of activists usually complain on the Twitter and the venue, which is afraid that if they go on with the event, might invoke violence from the people complaining they decide to cancel it or uh, the company thinking that if they don't fire the person, they're going to get negative press and negative PR. And it's a lot easier for them to just sever the ties with the individual rather than just keep them employed. So in other words, the reason that this is immoral is that you can have a person that is immensely popular and many people want to hear what that person has to say. But because of a couple of moral busybodies that are sometimes even aggressive in nature and do not shy from resulting to violence, get to step in between the, the speaker and the people want to listen to him and make sure that the people do not get access to that speaker. In other words, they are the new version of the soccer moms. They are concerned, I guess, about the public health of mind and they know what's better for you and they don't want you to listen to a person that they consider problematic. And it can be any type of person, whether it is a political commentator or even a writer like J.K. Rowling, whose books have sold in the millions and entire cultures are created around her body of work. And now we even see people from the far left uh, being attacked by the same group of people, by the same mob. So that is why it's immoral. It's a couple of people that think they know what's better for society and they are the sole arbitrators of deciding what you get to listen to and what you don't. Um, another reason why it's immoral is that the offense that is given in order to justify the cancel culture um, sometimes can be from decades ago. So something that a person have said 10, 20 years can come and haunt them in 2020, even though at the time when they said it, culturally, it was okay. And other people have said it as well, but we're going to pretend that, that that's not the case. And it's like, aha, uh -huh, we find something that you said back then, and now we're going to cancel you. Um, often, it's not even the person themselves that said something offensive. It can even be, as in the case of a football player, his wife, which said something. And now he is getting uh, fired because of what his wife has said. Or in the case of um, a race car driver, 
his father said something even before he was born. And because of that, he loses sponsorships. Or in the case of a woman whose boyfriend flew an airplane with the sign All Lives Matter, she gets fired because of what uh, he did. And I can find plenty of these examples where oftentimes the person didn't do anything, but someone else did it, and now they're getting punished for it. So it's a way of terrorizing people, I guess, uh, making them afraid because chances are no one is without sin. And it really depends what is offensive today so that any type of activist can go through your social media records all the way back and then to your family's social media records all the way back. Find just one thing that you said or did or someone else said and did that's offensive and justify that in order for you to lose your job. So that is why it's immoral. It's also immoral because the person doesn't have any way to defend themselves. Um, the person doesn't get a lawyer. We're not looking at evidence. Uh, there is literally nothing a person can do if the hate mob comes after them. So a really good example would be with Johnny Depp. So Johnny Depp gets accused of doing domestic violence towards his wife. And the entire internet tries to cancel Johnny Depp. So what ends up happening is that a couple of months later, Johnny Depp comes with recordings, audio recordings, with his wife actually assaulting him and claiming that no one is going to believe him, that no one is going to buy what he is saying, and that is why not only is she assaulting him, but he is saying, well, you're a man, so why can't you just take it? And the people on the internet who allegedly were trying to cancel Johnny Depp for justice and righteousness and to end domestic abuse, did not seem to come and even apologize on behalf of Johnny Depp or even try to uh, argue that now he, Amber is the one that should be fired. So this brings to the next problem that cancel culture doesn't actually achieve the goals that it claims to do. So the reason we are doing this cancel culture allegedly is in order to end bigotry in society. So you have a bigot, you get the bigot fired, and all of a sudden I suppose the bigot stops being a bigot. Or he learns his lesson or whatnot. Like, it's pretty much like, what is the maximum legal way you can get someone to suffer? That, that is what cancel culture is. Like, if these people had more power and let's say they, they would be able to imprison someone like the government can, they would probably do it. But that's not allowed that's illegal so the the worst thing they can do to a person the, the worst conceivable thing and still manage to be within the boundaries of the law is to get someone fired and i don't think a bigot getting fired stops being a bigot uh i think you're also hurting a lot of other innocent people like the person's children or their family members or you know like th these are collateral damage i guess and there doesn't seem to be any type of forgiveness. Uh, in fact, apologizing seems to make it worse. I even read a study that says when you apologize, it makes you look weak of character. And the people who were willing to defend you before are less likely to defend you after you apologize. And the mob views the apology as an admission of guilt. So if it was a ridiculous accusation that not a lot of people bought into, like, for example, a scientist uh, wearing a shirt with skimpily clad depictions of cartoon women, most people are probably going to shrug and they're going to say, this is absolutely ridiculous. Why, why should I get involved? But when the person apologizes, it shows, oh, so he actually knew that he's doing a bad thing. Oh, I see. So the people that were on the fence whether or not to jump uh, into uh, attacking that person are now going to be pushed a little bit towards because, well, he apologized. So therefore he knows it's an admission of guilt. We can move on with prosecuting him. Um, and also there doesn't seem a limit um, to how long a person is going to be canceled. Uh, there doesn't seem to be anything that a person can do and say, look, I, I was wrong in the past. I tried to work in order to improve myself. Uh, and I think I'm a better person now. I would like to come back into civilized society. And all of this leads me to assume that 
the purpose of cancel culture is not to end bigotry in society. The purpose of cancel culture seems to be twofold. Number one, to get people to be afraid to speak out. Um, we even see people from the far left now getting cancel culture if they step out of line. Uh, and I'll make a video about this um, probably tomorrow. But the second thing that I think is to make people feel good. This is what cancel culture really is. It's not about ending bigotry. It's not about fighting against injustice. It's about making the moral busybody feel good. Um, and it's also not about getting an apology or getting a person to change. It's simply about getting a person ruined. Like they want to ruin someone. They want to destroy someone. It usually, the, the way it happens, you would think that someone finds something offensive and then they get outraged about what they found offensive and are going after the person. Like that would be the logical chronological order, right? But what actually happens is that they might not like a person for various reasons, whether it is someone wanting a promotion that the person is fighting for or wanting that person's job position or simply because that person doesn't have the correct politics. So what they do, and I noticed this time and time again for, throughout the years, you're going to have a group of people that are then going to try to do archaeological offense, like dig through that person's social media, trying to find like some offense necromancy from four or five years in the past, and then go, aha, we found this. Now we can use this to ruin the person. And once they ruin the person, they get to feel good. They get to feel like a rush of adrenaline. I remember there was this blog on Tumblr, which doesn't exist now, but it was called Get Racist Fired. And all those people were doing was going through average people's social media, trying to find anything that's offensive. And when they did, they would post the number of the company that hired that person. And they would have like a blog of a hundred or a thousand people. And they would all join in and phone that company so from the company's perspective, it looks like there is a legitimate grassroots outrage over what that person posted. But in reality, it was artificially made. Most of those people probably weren't outraged. Do you know what they wanted? They wanted to get a little badge of honor on their Tumblr blog because that's what they did. They would give awards to people that they managed to cancel or get fired. And you know, like some of the people were legit posting problematic stuff, I guess. But others were just edgy or making jokes or <coughs> yeah, I, I guess like there were a couple of underage girls that had letters on their shirts and they sat in a uh, way in order to, to spell the N-word with two stars even. And they got fired from their high school and it's like, well, they're underage. Like if they committed a crime, you'd, you'd have, the government would have more leniency towards them because, you know, underage. But that doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. And I have seen cases where someone like Count Dankula gets invited on the BBC in order to answer some questions. And literally three or four people on Twitter complained, called him far right, and BBC goes like, yeah, we wanted to have you on, but now we're canceling the whole show. Because of three or four people. Like, it's ridiculous. And I know why it, why it happens. is because there is no backlash against this. Like if I was a corporation, bending the knee to this is a lot more profitable financially than not bending the knee. Like if you have a lot of people just asking you to fire one guy and you fire the guy, nothing else happens. Like you're off the hook. They leave you alone most of the times. But if you are a corporation and you don't want to fire him and then you, you make a stand and it's like, no, this is what we stand for. Well, then they try to find out, okay, well, uh, where is your business located? Uh, who is your landlord? And then they try to pressure the landlord. It's called power mapping. It's basically like they, they're looking at this from uh, the view of a chain and they try to find like each link in order to get you um, to suffer. And if they can't fire you from your company, then they're like, okay, well, where does the company rent space? Who's the landlord? Like, let's try to convince the landlord to cut rent to the company and hurt them that way. So for a company, it's it's usually a lot better to just fire the person. There's no backlash. Now, if there was backlash, let's say 
the moment a company fires a person that you get backlash from the right or from other groups of people uh, that are finding it unacceptable and now they're protesting and picketing, a lot of companies would just stop doing it. But the problem is like all of the people that are against cancel culture, they don't want to do cancel culture themselves because it's like, well, then we are just as bad as they are. So you end up in the situation where companies just like, well, if we don't fire him, bad things may happen. If you fire him, nothing will happen. So you end up in this paradox, pretty much. Um, and I will talk about tomorrow, about how far leftists are now against cancel culture because they're getting canceled. And I've been saying this for a while. It's like, if you're okay with this and you don't speak out, eventually it will happen to you. Like, it's impossible. You'll wear the wrong shirt. You will eat or enjoy the wrong food. You will say the wrong joke or at one point so these people are going to have to hold some opinions that even you find unacceptable and it's like a rubicon that you can't cross and even if you agree with them on 99.99% .99 of every other issue just because you disagree on that one point they're going to come after you and now that they're coming after the far left you have far left ideologues speaking against cancel culture isn't that amazing so uh, we're going to talk about it tomorrow. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And let me know what you think in the comment section. Take care and thank you for watching.